All of us have some thoughts about the past that are doing us no good today. We got burned. We got hurt. We got betrayed. We got hurt. And, and so to keep focusing on that today, something happened already and Jesus' blood is already taking care of it. I'm not letting go of something, holding on to it, and just like going to the bathroom, that's all I'm thinking about, all I'm thinking about. I got to relieve here and receive that God, God's grace, receive God's love, receive God's favor, receive God's mercy. Part of this rest area, when we talk about God's rest, is to first of all relieve and receive. The next one we're going to talk about here. So Matthew 20, 11, 28, beautiful scripture here. Let's read this again. I just love the scripture. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary, just tired, and burdened, or heavy laden. And what did Jesus say? Because I will take off from you the stuff you're dealing with. Because you don't have to keep being concerned about this. I just want you to let it go and then pick up, let this go, the bad, and pick up the good. Teach it up. Stop, stop holding on to the bad. Yeah, bad memories, bad hurt, bad habits. Let the bad go. And God said, your hand is closed with the bad. I can't put good in it. Just let it go, because I got some good for you. I got some things you can start off. I have, I have some things already for you. I'm about to take you to a new level, but you can't go to the next level. Always hold on to the past, but when there's a past go, I can promote you. I can raise you up. I can take you higher, but you got to let that old stuff go. It happened, it's over, it was painful, it's on Facebook, everybody knows about it, but it's still over. Let it go. Mark Zuckerberg not going to take it down, let it go. It's over. Because if I keep on looking back, you drive down the road, keep looking back to what happened. You keep, you drive, you, the road right here, you keep on looking back. I'm not talking about the review, you keep on looking back, eventually you're going to crash. It's just, I'm not going to be able to get where I'm supposed to go always looking back. Jesus says, no man put his head to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. What is that saying? He's not saying that word. He's saying you can't go forward and embrace what I have for you in the future if you keep on holding on to the past. Amen. And this whole thing about rest we'll see in just a moment was about the Hebrew children focusing too much on the past. So rest. So here's what it, so here's our acronym for rest. Now then I'm going to really unpack this even further. Read this with me please. It is what? Releasing every stressful trial to rest. It has nothing to do with taking a nap. It, it, it is about saying I'm going to rest. So when Jesus, when God rested on the seventh day in, in the book of Genesis, it was not because he was tired. He rested because his work was complete. And so what we're saying is I'm going to now accept the work that Jesus already completed. I'm not going to keep trying to work for something Jesus already did. Come on, somebody. I'm not going to keep trying to work for something Jesus already did. I'm not going to keep trying to do something that Jesus already done. I just got to accept what's already been done now. So then we talked about this idea of stress before. And so this stressful trial, everybody in here at some point has been to this point where it's at this point, just turn around and walk away, nobody gets hurt. The idea is so stressed, you see. This personal strain, anxiety, tension. And we talked about this very briefly before, stretched or stressed. You remember that? We talked about the difference is the end result or the outcome. And we said at this point that God never called us to be stressed, but he does want us to be, want us to be stretched. The outcome. What's the outcome? What's the outcome? Well, here's the outcome right here. So when I'm stressed, the outcome, I think, at the end of this journey is I'm going to break. I can't take it, I'm going to break but the outcome of being stretched is I know God's going to build me up. That this was occurred, this occurred because God's taking me higher. This occurred because I'm now better. This occurred, so, that, so, in the, so the idea of being stretched, stressed is that I don't think I'm going to make it, I'm going to give up and break. The idea of being stretched, I'm being built up to receive what God has for me. I, I love what it says over in Jude, Jude, in the book of Jude, it says build yourself up in your most holy faith. Praying in tongues. Build yourself up. There's some building going on. So read this from last week, please. When God stretches you beyond your comfort zone, He's preparing you for greater. Hey, anybody ready for greater? I see anybody ready for greater up in here? Well, prepare to be stretched, not stressed. Read this one. You can't what now? You cannot grow 
without being stretched. So the idea is so now entering God's will. Now, so the spiritual principle number four is why I want to spend a, a large part of our time and I'm going to give you one R and E from today after this. So, so this idea, so let me just kind of frame this for us. So, so how do, now that we understand about spiritual rest, relieve and receive, then, I bet every time you go to a rest stop, you're going to be thinking about it now. So the idea is, well, how, now what, how do we spend, how do we experience spiritual rest? Continues. That's the deal. How, how do we stay? We, we talk about entering into the rest. But you just don't want to enter in and then not enjoy the benefit of being there. It, it, it doesn't do any good to go into Cheesecake Factory after service today with 3,000 folk in the line, get into the door, and then still leave them hungry. You want to get in there and enjoy what's going on. Last time, I told you, last time we went to the Cheesecake Factory, I, my wife and I were going to have a wonderful time, and then uh, her dad came. And it, it was still nice, but the idea was we want to make sure that we had his, 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 his time for our bonding. But the idea was when you get in, you want to enjoy what happened when you get in. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you don't want to be outside in the heat, go in for a second, and then afterwards you go right back out. So, how do we enter and stay in? It, because we said in order to enter God's rest, then that way we can enjoy the rest of our lives. What do we need to do then? So we're going to really take a look and unpack. This is the, the book of what we're saying today. And if you would just write down the, the, the word the, the, the word rest, maybe on the back. Because we're going to be referencing that for the entire month here. Rest on the very back here. And each one of these, and we are looking at releasing areas stress for trial, certainly. But I want to take a look at what we learned from the lives of the Hebrew children. After they got out of Egyptian captivity. Because see, let me just say this, say this way to you. Over in, right here in, the, everything from Hebrews will begin at verse 7 in chapter 3. And all of Hebrews 4, it comes from these verses right here. From, he, from Exodus 13, 14, and 15. And also from Numbers 13. So we start talking about, so in other words, in order to understand the content, I have to understand what? Context. context. The context that the writer of Hebrews is talking about regarding God's rest has to do with the Hebrew children when they were getting out of the Egyptian captivity. All of this is about that. So from beginning from Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 to the end, and all of chapter 4, it's all referencing what happened when the Hebrew children were leaving Egyptian captivity. That's the context, okay? So now that we understand the context, let's go back and take a look. So the point was, how do we experience rest continually? We're just going to follow their lives and see what they didn't do so we can make sure we do what they didn't do to experience rest. Here's your first one. Read this with me, please, the R. Remember what God has already done. If you want to enter and stay in God's rest, we must remember what God has already done. It's so many. Now, what, what, what the Hebrews? What did the Hebrews trying to do? They got to the Red Sea. Now, now it was a, a perilous situation. Now, Red Sea is right here. Mountains right here. Pharaoh's army behind them. But they forgot that God had already brought them out of captivity. So if he brought them out of slavery, he's not going to take them from slavery to slavery. He took them from slavery to freedom. And all they did was they saw the present problem and forgot all about the past deliverance. Come on, somebody. And too many times believers, we look at our problem today and forget that God has brought us out of something deeper and something harder and something worse before. So I got to remember what God has done. Two at a time, yes. we get to this current problem and forget what God has already done. I've seen God move too many times. I know how he's already moved. And we forget all about that in our present problem. We go in here and find ourselves getting and looking over here at, at a little problem and get upset. And God just delivers from a mountain over here. Remember what God has already. Let me give you some scripture reference right here. So, so in Pharaoh, you have this in Exodus chapter 14. Pharaoh is approaching. Verse 11 said at that point, they asked Moses, there, there, there were no graves in Egypt. Why have you brought us out here to die 
in the desert, okay? Remember, okay? Now here's the con let me go back even further for this. So this is all in the book of Exodus. In Exodus 3, Exodus 3 is when God calls Moses from the burning bush to say, go, I know they I know you don't they don't like you in the field, I know they don't like you in Egypt, but I'm gonna send you back to Egypt to set people free. Moses saw a bush that was on fire not burned up, a bush on fire not consumed, and God says to King James, draw not nigh hither. In other words, don't come too close, because the ground you're standing on is holy ground. While he's talking to Moses there, and, they, and uh, the people are in Egypt in captivity, this is what God says right here in verse 20, same chapter. Read this with me, please. This is God saying, I will grant this people favor. What people? <coughs> Hebrew. I'm going to give them favor, keep going, in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be that when you go, you will not go into hand. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor, and the woman who lives in her house, articles of silver and articles of gold and clothing, and you will put them on your sons and daughters, thus you will plunder the Egyptians. So what are they saying here? You've been a slave to the Egyptians for 400 years. But when you go, they're going to give you their silver. When you go, oh my God, the preacher, they're going to give you their gold. And when you go, you're not going to leave him to hand it. In fact, you're going to take so much, they call it plunder. That means nothing left over here. They had everything. They're going to give it to you and have nothing left. All because I'm going to give you faith. They are still in captivity when God is talking to Moses. And at that point, God is telling them that I am going to put favor on your life that on a bad job you still get promoted. I'm going to give you favor right now that in a bad report you're going to still get healed. I'm going to give you so much favor that I know it's not fair, but I love you too much. I'm going to give you favor that you will not lose. Empty handed. I got to tell you, and I tell you, the first time I've read about this before, but this, you know, there, there are times when verses. Come alive to make it live in your life. The time when it came alive in our lives, in particular, as we got married, Pastor Lee was actually working for for Kraft and Nabisco, you know, the Oreo cookies. And, and, I, and I thought about marrying somebody who worked for Oreo cookies. Like this but anyway, so the idea was so her team had to go into the office and the boss worked from home. So her point was reasonable question if the boss works from home. I still stay with the company and work from home because home can be where you want to be. So the boss says, "You work. I'm working from home, but you report to me, so you got to be in the office." <laughs> so, where my husband, my wife, could go to HR. I'm trying to be above board. I'd like to work from home. They said no. Boss says no. We go on our honeymoon. Come back. Now, I'm not about to have go back and commute every day to Atlanta just so she can go back in because this lady from home won't let her work from home. So she doesn't work from home. Then they called her one day and they called the whole team in. Anybody's been in the company before. When they call you in, it's not to tell you you're doing a good job. <laughs> so as we get ready to leave, now, you know, this is when, tell you, this is when you're coming, you're young, you know, you don't know any better. We drove down to Atlanta. Stayed down there, took it to a job, drove back in the same day, bought a car while we were down there, somebody had to bring the car back up, and ride the bus back. All that in one day. And then the next day, I'll refresh. Now, I get the high point in the nap. So the idea was, so, the point, so we, we go down to Atlanta. And where we go, and on our way down, my wife said, she said, she said, I, you know, I, I've been praying about what this is, and, I, and I'm sure they're going to let us go, but I'm not going to leave it to hand. I said, okay, I'm in agreement. I don't know what that means, but we're going to go back and see what it means. I, now, I, so I'm not going to undo what you believe in God for if it's going to be good for us, you know what I'm saying? So I, so I learned to agree quickly. I, some, 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 if, she, if she comes and say, I agree with me, it's not speaking in tongues. I'm agreeing because it's good right there. So, that, so we go down to Atlanta. So she goes into the office, and, so, and this is the thing. She's walking in. One of her co coworkers is coming out. Face all red, torn up, boxing, big, big charming all up under here. <laughs> so then, here's my wife going to there. They said, well, you know, we decided we're going to reorganize everything and then go, and we're going to give you a package. My wife, well, where, where do I sign? Where do I sign? 
And, they say, and, and so then they tell her they're going to pay her.